that's going to be a part of day one as well as Seth Rollins going up against Drew McIntyre for that World Heavyweight Championship. And Drew's promo resonated a lot um, at times with myself, but also with um, I know you and you and Tony, uh, you and Mark Henry were talking about Tony Khan's media scrum, right? Yeah. And where, hey, is it worth it? I saw somebody uh, put up a thing uh, about Tony Khan where it's like, you know, here's a, a guy who doesn't have to work a day of his life and he probably works more than anybody and he gets hit with so much scrutiny and, you know, straight up he's a wrestling fan and has given hundreds of people jobs and has created a lot of moments for millions of people already. And then, you know, what Drew is also saying about his promo, hey, is it worth it? Is it worth that? Like, hey, my mom was sick. My grandfather's sick. I'm, I moved away from home and I don't see these people. And hey, guess what, Seth? You know, your wife, yourself, is it worth it? I need this because I did all this and what he's feeling is regret. He's not being a dickish heel. He's trying to reason with him. And then, yes, when he turns around, and I also like the realism from Seth where like, hey, man, I don't know. I, I'm, I, don't, I, I don't understand you. And then, of course, when Seth turns his back, he goes to get jumped and even said, what, what are you going to take shortcuts? You never did that. And it's truth. It's very, very truthful statement of stuff like that because he did everything the right way. And where did that get up? Where did that wind up for him? Dude, I, I told you this, man. I... I had missed so many family events and now my family is gone and it's like, was it worth it? And then your family always tells you exactly what Drew said. Like, no, we understand you have to do what you have to do. But then when you think back, like crap, like I miss so much stuff and now I can never get that back. So what is that end result? And that's that's a hard that that's a a complex character, it really truly is, and that's why Tommy to me, you know I I feel almost like Drew's coming across as a babyface, why? Because I feel that connection, that emotional connection with Drew McIntyre. I I can completely understand where Drew McIntyre is coming from, because Drew got screwed. And everybody's telling him to get over it and move on. It's very, very hard to reach the pinnacle, to reach the top. And then you did it at a time when nobody was really paying attention. Think about it. Like, Drew McIntyre was on fire when he won that Royal Rumble right before the lockdown. I mean, you're talking about less than a month before the world shut down. Drew McIntyre wins the Royal Rumble, the Claymore on, on Brock Lesnar. Yep. Everybody remembers that. Everybody was so – think about that. That was a moment, uh, uh, Tommy. That was the night that Edge returned. And think about the pop Edge got. But yet, what was everybody talking about the next day? They were talking about Drew McIntyre. And, and now it's Drew's time. Here's a guy that, you know, was the chosen one from Vince McMahon. And – Never really got over like I think the WWE planned on him getting over. Then he was a part of three-man band. He was irrelevant at, at a point in his career in the WWE. That's just that's just a fact. Then he's gone from the company. He works, works his ass to get back, gets that moment, and then he has his moment in front of no fans. At a, at a WrestleMania, Tommy, that most of us would just want to forget about. And I, I I know for myself, I've never gone back and watched it. And maybe never will, Tommy, because it just brings back so many bad memories. And then he's sitting at home watching his match because WrestleMania that year wasn't even live. It was pre-taped. And then he comes back, and he's been forgotten about again. Like, And then he has that moment in front of his in front of his home crowd, in front of his family, in front of his friends, and he gets screwed. And and everybody's just expecting him to forget about it and move on. That's asking a lot from Drew McIntyre, in my opinion. I agree. And it, but if it's an orange, orange, if it's an origin story, it's where he goes insane. 
because he can harp on it, harp on it, harp on it. And it it does. It could eat you away. Dave, you're talking to somebody who his entire existence was based upon a wrestling company. And that company was taken away and he was lied to and all this stuff. But I then had to, if I didn't let it go, then what? Am I going to be the guy sitting on my lawn going ECW, ECW? It's gone. It's over. Or even when WWE took over that thing called ECW, I'm like, well, this is how we used to do it. You have to say, no, it's it's not mine. It doesn't exist. And I need to move forward. And I have, and you will succeed. If it becomes your obsession, you just, it's like, dude, move forward. Because if not, you're just going to be, you know, left behind. Yeah, but Tommy, one of the people who screwed him, Jay Uso, who was part of the bloodline at that time that screwed Drew McIntyre, is now one of the most popular wrestlers on Monday Night Raw. And every time he goes out there, everybody's on their feet. And that's got to get to you, too. Because those same people who loved you and that wanted you to become the new WWE champion are now cheering for one of the people who screwed you out of that opportunity. So that's got to, I mean, I, I feel for Drew. And Seth, to me, comes across kind of condescending. Like Seth coming out there with the, he's not being sympathetic. I mean, Tommy, any friend would be a little bit sympathetic. Nobody's sympathetic with Drew McIntyre at all. They're, they're, if, if anything, they're being extremely like, uh, like just like get over it, move on, come on, enough already. Like there's, he's getting no sympathy. He's not getting any sympathy from his friends, and he's getting no sympathy from the WWE universe. I actually feel bad for Drew McIntyre in this situation. Uh, I, I to the point, I, I want to see Drew McIntyre beat Seth Rollins and become your new World Heavyweight Champion at day one. I make him snap and start breaking bones and start taking people out and hurting people, hurting people that you like and love because he's hurting. I make him that. And I mean, listen, the guy could look the part, play the part, make him the man in the sense of, I mean, he could be a top guy, but be, be the top guy as a heel and where you go from there, anywhere you want. He, yeah. cause then it's also, if you think about it, if he wins that title, he gave up his morals, turned on everybody, and now what does he have? You're that old guy sitting there by yourself enjoying this ultimate goal that you're obsessed about. The crowd has already turned on Drew McIntyre. With Bret Hart, it was, it was slow and gradual. I almost feel, and, and again, Ethan, thanks for the phone call, I, I, uh, I almost feel like the crowd has already completely turned on Drew McIntyre. Uh, I agree, but like you're saying, you feel bad and you want to see Drew win all that stuff. And if you like what uh, he had said, uh, he being the caller, um, when Brett had with Brett would be like, I didn't change. Your values have changed. Like I'm still the same guy. I'm still, but when you say it the way Brett did it, more also, not that he was condescending, but like, I'm the best there is, was, and ever will be. People are like, no, you're not. Boo. Um, it, there is there is a lot of truth and merit to exactly what Brett's, Brett did say. You know, there was, and it was an ama amazing, amazing, you know, heel turn for Brett. Because you, at that time, couldn't think uh, that it could happen. But also think of, like, what Brett said. Like, you know, hey, I pulled you out of this cartoon era, and I'm a wrestler. Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was fascinating. Uh, and I could see that I, because of also how drew looks drew's intensity in the ring and what drew physically like this, I saw him in a different light, the way, like even how he turns his head down and he's looking down at his, as opponents, like, uh, I saw a different, like more sadistic side of a drew McIntyre, which if they were able to pull that trigger and actually go heat, heat. I think he could be that type of person. Because, again, who could stop a guy who's as big as him? And I love how they've had this story play out. And like Ethan said, a slow burn. Because what happens when you get screwed over? What happens when something really bad happens in your life, Tommy? You, you, you first have, like, the denial process. And then, and then you have the depression. And then you have the anger. And I think we felt that with Drew. At first it was denial. 
He kept moving forward. He wasn't letting him affect him. There was the denial period. Then there was the depression period where he's like, woe is me. Like, why did this happen to me? Why me of all people? And now you're getting the anger coming out from Drew McIntyre because that's real life. That's how people truly feel when things like this happen to them. And we're seeing that play out from Drew. And unlike the WWE, you know, a few years ago, they would have rushed this process. I love how they're making this a slow burn with Drew McIntyre, Tommy. Yeah, uh, I do feel it's working. I don't know if he's going to win the title. If he does, like I said, it could add. If he doesn't, he should totally snap and lose. Yeah. If he loses, Claymore kicks the crap out of Seth and hurts him. Um, if he wins, it's then interesting because he's now on top. And like I said, he is his regret is what he did to win the title. Cause now he's alone. Yeah. You know, it's the very, you got what you wanted and then you realize it's, it's not enough. Like all what he had said about the sacrifices and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I mean, I remember when we had him on and he kind of broke the fourth wall, which was, he's one of the few people that ever do that in WWE because of during COVID time. But when he said, cause you had reminded me, I won the title and I couldn't even like celebrate because it was pre-taped. Yep. And he goes, I remember I had to just put it upstairs. I didn't even go in that room because I was so worried. Like what if something happens? Like it wasn't real until I watched it on television, but then you can't even celebrate the way you want to celebrate. And he goes, I just kept it in a room just like, Hey, cause in our business, it's like, it doesn't happen until it happens until that paperwork is signed until you're literally there. You're like, I hope it happens. I've, I have seen people's debuts get pulled back. I have seen angles get ready to be started and then they don't air it while the person is in the crowd waiting to be shown. And then something happened. They pulled that person out. I have seen things change in a heartbeat in WWE. And then all of a sudden, like, they just go in a different direction. And, you know, he had to live through that. And like you said, and I mean, he was an MVP of an era where, you know, when everyone was up in arms for WWE firing everybody, talents, uh, when they were drawing right with no fans. And then what is the, you know, what is the old timer and still today? It's always asses in the seats. How many asses in the seats did you draw? None. It's a shitty time, but nonetheless, it was the most necessary time for the WWE. Yeah, and 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 for us, you know. And Dave, you know, I, I, I don't mean to cut you off, but there used to always be amongst the wrestlers, and then it was amongst the fans, but mainly for the wrestlers. Hey, we're the people who carried the company, and then here came WrestleMania, and then we all lose our spots too. These other, they bring in, you know, the older talents that aren't always there. And a lot of those talents had that resentment. That's Drew. And then when things opened up back again, that rain and his spot was already gone. Yep. Because now, Tommy, every time you saw Drew McIntyre wrestle on Monday Night Raw or you heard Drew McIntyre cutting a promo, it wasn't getting any reactions because he was doing it in front of no fans. And you know that, Tommy, like how many times do we talk about, you know, what somebody's doing? L.A. Knight's the perfect example. L.A. Knight's over. Why? Because you hear it from the crowd. Because they chant his name. They chant, yeah. You know he's over by the reaction. Cody Rhodes, you know he's over by the reaction from the crowd. But if L.A. Knight was doing what he was doing and there were no fans and nobody was reciting it and nobody was saying, yeah, do you think L.A. Knight would have gotten a title shot? I'm going to say probably no, because there was no gauge to see if this guy is truly getting over with the fans. Drew was robbed, Tommy, of his opportunity. He was, who knows where Drew McIntyre would be right now, Tommy, if there wasn't the lockdown, if there wasn't COVID, if there wasn't that shutdown. He was a, he was hot. He had 50,000 people on his feet when he won the Royal Rumble. That was a great moment to sign off from that show. 
And now you don't get the opportunity to defend that championship in front of people. And I think a lot of fans got tired of seeing Drew McIntyre because not because of Drew, but because people didn't really enjoy watching it the way that it was structured at a time when there was no other way to do it. And by the time it, the world opened up again and fans were able to come back, they've already moved off of Drew McIntyre. Tommy, I wonder where Drew would be right now if that didn't happen. Would Drew still be the champ? Would he still be at the top of the card? I, 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 don't, know, I don't know if anybody could answer that question because you can't. But then if you take it the other way from the conflicted character, where would the WWE be without me? During that time, it was the most crucial time in the history of wrestling. Yeah, it truly was. And for the men and women that went out there and did what we did during that time. Uh, and I, I mean, unheard of. And, you know, I mean, I, I've heard from we all have all these different stories and, and you know, there there should be many, many books and tales about what wrestlers did during that era but think about the world of wrestling changed how we watch sports also during that time because how impact you know, AEW and especially the WWE how they incorporated you know fans and like the signs uh the fake fans and then the television how the rest of the world kind of like had to follow well if this people can do it but great but what did they really have to do? It was the performers. Yeah. That's a whole other part of his spiral downwards. Oh, it's phenomenal. And, I love it. 